All right, hello everyone, what is going on? You know what time it is. It is time for another round of Biggest Winners and Losers, this time Sky Guardians Edition. So if you haven't seen one of these videos before, what I do is I go through each nation and I rank order them, but I do it according to how much love Gaijin showed or didn't show to that particular nation. So let's dive in. All right, so before I jump into the nations, let's talk about how we all win here. So. We finally got that ejection seat animation and it looks so cool. It's so much better than just them dealing out with the parachutes. We got new map locations. We got a reformatting of the air realistic battle um, game mode. So I made a separate video on that. I'll put it up here in the corner if you want to check that out. We also got contrails. So some more animations and more realism. I think that's pretty cool as well. Now you also get to know what's killing you. So when you get destroyed in a game, it tells you what ammunition actually killed you, which I think is pretty helpful. All right, so no more waffling. Let's jump into the nations here. So the biggest winner is Japan. And really because they got the F-16 AJ, come on, whether you are against it or for it, you got to acknowledge that Japan needed a competitive jet. And I think the F-16 AJ was a very fine addition. And you know, there, there's already been a lot of controversy on that. I don't wanna rehash that stuff. I'm just glad they got the aircraft. They also got a Type 16 FPS uh, premium vehicle, which is always good. Got, you know, Japan always needs more ground vehicles. It's certainly a good addition, especially if you wanted to buy a premium anyway. Japan also got the IGN Ninoi. I probably said that wrong, Ninohai, but it's a Hatsuhiro class destroyer, always good to get a good boat. All right, so moving on here to Germany, they're next up. Germany did pretty well this patch. Um, they got the MiG-29, which was awesome. They needed that jet, but they also got another jet. It is a squadron vehicle, but they got the Hunter F-58, which looks to be really, really cool, especially at the BR that it's at. I can't wait to actually unlock that vehicle and fly it around. So good on, uh, good for Germany in the air category. He also got the T-72 M1, another East German edition. And he also got a very, very low tier um, SPAA. Germany and China also got it. It's the SD KFZ-222. So there you go. He also got the File or a File class, which is a rank five torpedo boat. So rounding out the top three winners here is Italy. And it was actually really good to see Japan, Germany, and Italy at the top here. You know, normally they get, you know, they kind of get stumped on when it comes to getting vehicles. But Italy finally got another Ariete, the Ariete AMV PT-1. It's 11.3 MBT. It also brings with it DM-53 and, you know, the Ariete and the PSO also got DM-53. It was really good to see Gaijin show Italian ground forces some love here. On the air side of things, they got the P-47 and the RO-44. And for Naval, they got a battleship, the RN Dulio, at rank five. All right, coming in in fourth place is Russia with the Yak-141 Freestyle. I'm really glad that plane is here. Can't wait to um, actually show it to you guys in a video. I'm still spading it right now. Russia also got a premium plane, which is the I-15. It's a little bit low tier, but you know, still pretty cool to get it. But the, the big deal for Russia was the Pantsir S1. On the ground side, I think that's the the centerpiece for the Sky Guardians update. Russia didn't really need the Pantsir S1, but um, they got it nonetheless. And there's also the M5359, which I think is a Czechoslovakian SPAA. And Russia also rounded out their, um, you know, their hole with the MPK204, which is a rank four sub chaser. All right, so next up is the USA. And, you know, they got the F4S, which was good. It's a premium. Uh, aircraft to grind the tech tree with you know I still put it down here because it's another F4 not really happy but they they did need a premium jet that was better than the A6 intruder uh, as far as air to air goes one thing I am happy about though was the AH-60 um, excuse me AH-6M little bird I was waiting for the helicopter and I cannot wait to unlock that on the ground side of things we have the T1E1 which looks like a just an M6 with maybe a different transmission. It looks like it's two kilometers per hour faster. Don't know much about that. If uh, if you can give me more information on the difference in the T1E1, 
please hit me up in the comments. But for all you naval fans, the US Cree did get the USS Des Moines, which is, you know, I, I kind of like that ship from uh, World of Warships. And they also got the USS Nevada battleship. All right, so coming up next is the UK with the Tornado F3. That's what I'm gonna talk about first. And I'm glad the plane is here. I've been hearing some stories, um, you know, that it's not really that great. Keep it in mind that the plane was an interceptor first, an interceptor always, really. It's not a dogfighter. So in a game where the meta jets are the jets that are good at dogfighting, the Tornado F3 is performing as expected to me. So, but I still can't wait to get my hands on it. Next up, I want to talk about the Challenger 2E. And for all of you um, British tank fans, you're probably happy that you finally got a Challenger that's somewhat fast. I can't wait to get my hands on this vehicle as well. Of course, there's also the Churchill that came, but I'm really excited about the Challenger 2E. And it wouldn't be an update for Britain unless they got some boats, but they did get um, a Canadian boat this time. So there's the HMCS Terra Nova, which is a rank five Canadian frigate, and the HMS Whitby, a Whitby class rank four frigate. All right, so um, next up is Israel, and they had a surprise entry with the Kurnas 2000, the best Phantom in the game, really, with its APG-76 radar. That radar is supposed to have synthetic aperture multi-mission radar system, but you know, Gaijin really isn't modeling any kind of air to ground modes right now. But I suspect that once they start to do that, the real power of the Kurnas 2000 will come into the game. Israel also got the Merkava 4 LIC, which was good to get another Merkava. I, I love the Merkava tanks, but what I'm really disappointed in though, is that Israel did not get some kind of um, SPAA. They really need a system bad. And this is yet another update where Israel gets no competitive SPAA system. All right, so the last of the winners here and just barely France creeps in with the char 2c you know a land ship i won't really talk about it that much but they did get some actual ships because the french navy is coming to the game so that's why they're the last winner here i think it's eagle and maybe it's eagle in english but the angle excuse me eagle which is a rank 2 destroyer and they also got the duguay truin i probably said that wrong as well which is a rank 3 light cruiser so really cool that the French Navy is coming into the game. All right, so China and Sweden are going to be the biggest losers this patch. China just got a premium F-84G. You know, everybody gets one sooner or later, I guess. And they got the ZTS-63, kind of like a, a PT-76-ish light vehicle. And they got a light tier, or excuse me, a low tier SPAA, the SD-KFC-222. Sweden got the uh, ITPSV-90, which is an SPA as well. Looks more like the Marksman. I think it is just a Swedish Marksman. And um, that is it for this patch. China, Sweden at the bottom. Everybody else made out pretty well. You know, as always with these videos, let me know what you think about this patch. Did your favorite nation make out uh, pretty well or did your the nation you main do pretty bad here? What vehicles would you like to have seen versus what we got? All right, guys, thanks for checking out the video as always. If you like to hit that thumbs up, it really helps me out a lot. And if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. I'll see you in the future. Thank you.